This one is low pump. Okay. Who want to answer a question? You. What's your name again? Chen. Is this centrifugal pump? But it's rotating. Okay. Is this PD or centrifugal pump? PD pump. Because we push the volume of fluid forward mechanically, right? The fluid go into the edge on the side and we push it forward mechanically. So this is rotary flow pump. It's a PD pump. Even though something spin, it's not centrifugal pump. Okay. The next one is okay, progressive gravity. It's, not, it's very fun. Okay, we have liquid solid mixture here coming in. And inside we have kind of screw. Okay. So the movement of this screw inside it pushed the liquid forward. So this is what they call progressive cavity pump. It is not centrifugal pump. It's PD type, positive displacement type, because we push liquid forward mechanically. Okay, progressive cavity pump. Okay. Have helical shape inside and we, we just push it forward. Okay, next one. Uh, Modifest pump. The MP1 is designed with a two piece casing. The inner casing is chrome plated for increased abrasion resistance and can be easily replaced should wear occur over time. Pump nozzles are integral to the outer casing. As such, the inner casing is not exposed to any pipe loads, ensuring a non contacting water operation. All components that comprise the pump casing are produced from castings or are machined from pressure water plate. This approach eliminates the potential for weld failures and sulfide stress corrosion cracking during operation. The double suction design ensures the mechanical seals are only exposed to suction pressures for optimized operating conditions. A dynamic liquid seal is required between the intermeshing screws and casing when pumping multi-phase mixtures with high gas volume fractions or during gas sucks. The MV1 incorporates a large chamber between the outer and inner casings which captures liquid that keeps the screws flooded. This ensures a dynamic seal is always maintained and also dissipates the heat of compression associated with multi-phase pumping. Typically, pump cannot pump gas, okay? Pump is used for liquid boiling, but this one they designed that it can handle if there are some gas coming in. They call modifest pump. Basically, it's a screw pump. Is this one centrifugal pump or positive displacement pump? It has to be positive displacement pump because we push liquid forward mechanically, okay? And Next one. Okay. What is that? Huh? We put several centrifugal pump, centrifugal pump in series. So each blade that's a each centrifugal, centrifugal pump. So fluid come in, it spin, right? From the first stage to the second stage to the next one. Extremely low NPS edge value due to accelerating that combined with something. So my point is, 
we can put several pumps together. Okay. And it's, it has several several blades inside. Okay. So this is centrifugal pump. You have seen this before, right? We put several of these in series that will increase flow rate or discharge pressure. Pressure. Okay. If we want to increase the flow rate, we have to put it in parallel. Okay. So when we put it in series, that is going to increase pressure. Good? So pump can put in series okay, to increase the pressure. And ESP pump. ESP pump is a centrifugal pump that put in series. Okay. This is inside the well. So we have several one, two, three, four, five, six. Several centrifugal pump put in series. Okay. One after another one. To push liquid forward. So this is electrical submersible pump. Is this PD or centrifugal? Centrifugal. But it's just several of them put after one another, right? Centrifugal pump in series. Uh, gear pump. Gear pump. It has gear. Okay. Think we're coming in. And it go into the gap between the gear and the edge. And it moves forward. Okay. This one they call it gear pump. We push liquid forward mechanically. So what is this type? PD, positive displacement pump, right? Good. So even though the spinning motion is not um cylindrical pump. So another gear pump. Look at the pump by itself. Inside, when we cut it, it has gear and the fluid going between the gap and move forward. Okay. See? So if we spin it faster, it moves faster. See? It go into this gap and then move forward. This is a gear pump. Is it PD or centrifugal pump? PD. Very good. The next one. This one we call sliding vane. Okay. See this thing? The vane that can coming out and go inside. Okay. It moves in and out readily. That's sliding rain. So that means something like that. So that's just to show you how, how it works. So we, we, we push liquid forward. Liquid go in between the gap. Rain, uh, between two rain. You see it? This band helps to sweep liquid forward. Good. Is this PD or centrifugal pump? PD. And if you notice, it goes into between the narrow gap, right? If there is a solid in, it's not gonna work. Okay? Because this requires a seal, mechanical seal between the band and the body. So this one is band pump. Okay, this one in the middle is it's kind of fun. Installed aluminum pump. The liquid chamber, 1500, 76 millimeter, 3 inch. Diaphragm pump. Aluminum pump. The liquid chambers are alternately filled and emptied by fluid that is drawn through a common inlet and discharged through a single outlet. The diaphragms in each chamber are linked by a single shaft, allowing them to move in unison. The air valve directs pressurized air to the back of diaphragm A. 
This begins chamber B's suction stroke, which starts as diaphragm B is moved toward the center of the pump, thereby creating a vacuum in chamber B. Atmospheric pressure then forces fluid into chamber B past the inlet ball valve. When the pressurized diaphragm A reaches the limit of its discharge stroke, the air valve redirects pressurized air to the back of diaphragm B. This begins the discharge stroke of chamber B. The hydraulic forces developed inside of chamber B force the inlet ball onto its seat and the discharge ball off its seat. This condition allows fluid to flow through the pump discharge. The same process occurs in the opposite chamber, constituting one full cycle. The pump will continue to run until inlet air supply is interrupted or discharge pressure rises to equal that of the air inlet pressure. So this is diaphragm pump. Do we have a very small gap? In the, oppos in the opposite chamber. That, that's some gap. Okay, liquid has to go past this ball, just that. So if you have some small solid particle, it's fine, okay? It's fine, because the gap is kind of bigger. Let's watch another one. This show me more on what's going on inside. So there's an air supply, and there's an air valve in the middle to divert the air pressure whether it's push this side or another side. So when it push on the dark green one, compressed air, uh, okay. so it lets liquid come in one way and, and keep, keep on moving. What do we call this one? Centrifugal pump or positive displacement? Positive displacement, right? Because we push it forward mechanically, okay? So this kind of pump is um, diaphragm pump, right? It works good for liquid. ESP, you have seen all that. <coughs> Question? Question. Diaphragm pump, most of the time is used for dirty liquid. Okay? If the liquid is dirty, we mostly use diaphragm pump. Okay? Because if we compare to gear pump, we don't want any solid particle to go in between the gear gap, right? So that is not going to be good, especially the vein pump. So there's a closed small gap over here, solid particle go inside, won't be good for this. But diaphragm pump, it can tolerate some, if it, some particle, if it is a little dirty, it's fine. Alright, you have seen all kind of pump already. Uh, positive displacement pump and centrifugal pump, what is the benefit of each of them? Who, who want to answer this? Uh, let's, let's change. Senior, what is the benefit of centrifugal pump? And what is the benefit of uh, positive displacement pump? Which one deliver more pressure? Centrifugal? Really? Which one deliver more flow rate? Centrifugal. Centrifugal or positive displacement pump? Positive displacement. The problem with this is if you get it wrong, once you get it wrong on board, okay? So PD, memorize it. It pushed like directly, so this is good with pressure, right? It compresses very efficient, but it doesn't give much volume. Centrifugal type give a lot of volume, okay? But it's increased pressure, not as much as a positive displacement type, all right? And now you should be able to identify, oh, what about the self priming? Who wants self priming? Gideon? What about self priming? What is it? What is self priming pump that you watched last time? Okay. Do we need some liquid inside the pump to start for self priming pump? Yes. If we have nothing in it, we start it dry, 
it doesn't work. Okay? Initially, there must be some liquid in it. Otherwise, we have a lock. Okay? So initially, there has to be some liquid in it. Maybe half full. And if it is self-priming, it will do the job. If we don't have a chamber, as in the case of self-priming pump, half full may not be enough. It may have to be completely full. Okay? Completely full. <laughs> Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do some pump calculation. Okay. We have uh, yes. No. Pump is not a like test. The compressor, the theory part, even though it is not on the test, it's just a calculation part, but for you to do the calculation, you need to know the theory to a certain level. Okay. Let's continue. Before we start, let's talk about the unit a little bit. PSIA, power force per square inch, absolute. PSIG is a gauge pressure. You all know this, right? And there's a conversion between <coughs> um, power force per square inch and power force per square feet. You can do that's 144 trick. Okay. Water density is that much, 62.4 bar per cubic foot. So we have a conversion between PSI and feed of liquid, this formula. So PSI. Multiplied by 144 divided by density multiplied by SG, specific gravity, this is equal to feet of liquid. So pressure unit can be expressed in the unit of um, PSI of feet of liquid. Okay. Typically, we use feet of water or inch of water for the case of water pressure. Okay. Type of pump. PD pump. And kinetic energy, kinetic energy is centrifugal pump and regenerative, regenerative turbine or special effect pump, we don't talk about any of that. The unique feature of this is <coughs> pump curve. Let's focus on the pump curve. Okay. Pressure, when we, we plot pressure, Versus flow rate. Okay. The straight line that is up like that, it is positive displacement pump. Okay. It's PD pump. The curve, why, why should it be straight up? Look at this. When the pressure change, if we have, okay, I have my pump, my pump. This is suction side, and this is discharge side. If I have a lot of pressure, push against the discharge. Okay. Centrifugal pump will pump less. Okay, look at this. When when the okay, let's take a look at low viscosity fluid first, like water. So if I have not much water against it, okay. So I have good flow rate, high flow rate. If I have some pressure if I squeeze the pipe more, okay, there's a pressure pressure push against the pump. So flow rate drop, 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 drop. As the pressure against the pump is more, okay, flow rate drop more. And if I close it completely, okay, it doesn't flow. Okay, this is the unique uh, feature of the pump curve. So for a centrifugal pump, if I have less pressure against it, it flows very fast. If I have more pressure against it, it doesn't flow. Okay. What about the PD pump? If I close the valve, I close the valve, I close the outlet, I have my vein pump. Okay. I close the valve at the outlet. What happened? What happened over here? The pipe will burst. 
right? If you break the small, the weakest joint or fitting inside this will break. So it doesn't care how much pressure that we push against it. It delivers the same thing because we push the liquid forward mechanically, right? So that's why the flow rate may go down a little or not at all, even though we have some pressure against it. So it just straight up or bend a little bit. So this line is the pump curve for reciprocating pump. Good. So if I just have a quiz, oh, by the way, you remember the quiz that we have again? I don't need to tell you to bring the calculator, but you can still write the expression, if not the final answer, right? So this means, even though I don't tell you to bring the calculator, I can just give you the quiz. Maybe we have the spring break or something. Good? But it doesn't need the calculator. If I just write the expression, no need to calculate the final result, you have to put the number in the right place, just that. You understand? Very good. Okay. Let's say we have a quiz and I don't tell, hey, centrifugal pump, I don't put that. The positive displacement, I say, this is a pump curve uh, plot between the discharge pressure and the flow rate. And I have this line, line number one and line number two. And I ask you which one is a pump curve for centrifugal pump. You can do it. And which one is a pump curve for um, reciprocating pump or positive displacement pump? You can do it, right? If I just delete this part and then you will be able to tell. Hey, centrifugal pump, the when, this uh, the when this pressure is higher or we squeeze the system more, the flow rate drop, 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 drop. But it doesn't drop for the case of PD. Good? Let's say look at the impact of this cost thing. If I pump water, okay, and I decide to, instead of pumping water, let's pump high viscosity oil. Water viscosity is one CP. Let's pump something like 175. Okay. Do I have the same flow rate? No. For the case of centrifugal pump, the blade just spin, right? If it's viscous, it obviously spins slower or it delivers less. So when viscosity go up, okay, the flow rate go down. Even though I open it fully, okay, no pressure against it or anything, it go from that to that, okay. So flow rate drop a lot if viscosity go up. But this doesn't happen for the case of positive displacement because positive displacement, I push it forward volume by volume. It doesn't care much about viscosity. So when uh, viscosity go up, the pump curve kind of stay close to each other, okay? Closer to each other. Good? Okay. How do I start the pump? For centrifugal pump, I have to close the end, okay? And then I start the pump. Then I open the valve, okay? I pump against a dead end first for centrifugal pump for maybe five seconds or for a while, for a little bit, and then I open it. It's preferable to start the centrifugal pump by pump against the dead end. It's preferable, okay? But for the case of um, PD pump, you don't start it that way. If you close the, the outlet and you turn on the pump, it will blow everything. Not good, okay? For PD pump, when we start it, we have to make sure that the flow part is okay. And we have to have bypass or a lower switch or something. We will talk more about that later, okay? All right, the next one is pump efficiency and viscosity, okay? So efficiency of pump change when viscosity change. So I plot uh, viscosity, centric stroke, and pump efficiency. So when viscosity go up, efficiency go down. 
quite a lot. The road study is um, uh, PD, right? Positive displacement time. So efficiency go down, but not that much. For centrifugal pump, it's very susceptible for increasing viscosity. Good. Um, centrifugal pump, you have seen the video. When we see this in the video, it says the gap over here is even more than this. So if you see this unit alone, and I have number one and number two, you can identify, right, which one is an inlet, which one is an outlet. Can you? So in here, number two is an inlet, suction side. And, uh, number two is an inlet, and number one is an outlet, this charge side. Good? That's maybe the quiz based on the video. Okay. Arm curve, for the case of centrifugal pump, arm curve shift toward higher uh, flow rate and head as pump speed increase. You see the pump curve that I had before. This line is just at one speed. If I spin the centrifugal pump, maybe at constant RPM, 500 RPM, I get one line. Okay. If I change the speed, I get different line. Okay. So when speed go up, N2 is more than uh, N1 is more than N2, and then pump curve shift move outward. Okay. So different speed deliver um, at different flow rate. More speed de deliver more flow rate. Good. Okay. Increase pump speed give higher flow rate for the same head required. Okay. For the same head pressure. System curve. System head required by the system increase as Q increase, more frictional pressure loss. Pump curve, pump handle, blah 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 blah. We have two kind of pressure flow rate relationship. Okay. Number one is how much that we can deliver or how much is available. How much is available is based on the pump curve, right? That's a pump curve. Okay? That is how much we can provide. What about pressure drop in the pipe? You see this line? I call it this system curve because what? If I flow more or I flow faster, when I flow faster, I have more pressure drop. You see? Head require or pressure drop go up, right? Pressure drop go up as speed go up. Good? The function is 2f rho v square over d. You remember this? And that's the finding friction factor. We can talk more about that, but okay. System curve is a pressure drop in the pipe or pressure drop in the system. Pressure drop in the system go up as flow rate go up. But this is not the same as a pump. Okay? When we have, when we squeeze it more, pump deliver less and less and less. So if I show it more, pump instead of high flow rate, it uh, reduces the flow rate that it deliver. Now, what is the flow rate that we should expect in the system? So what do we do? We plot both and the cross point. The cross point is the actual uh, flow rate and pressure drop in the system that we should have. Okay? So if I have it at one RPM, okay, high RPM, then then I say okay, that is the pressure in my system. The system curve will it change if I reduce the pipe size. Yes, right. If I reduce the pipe size, it have even more pressure drop for the same volumetric flow rate. So this system curve depend on the pipe size. Okay. Good. For now. Our concern is just on the pump curve, not the system curve yet. The system curve, we will learn more about it in the single phase flow and multi phase flow of liquid and gas. Okay. How do we read it? Pump curve for centrifugal pump, we have pressure or head versus flow rate Q. Okay. That one is a pump curve, head versus flow rate curve. So the way we read it is, if we have a certain head pressure, 
then we can tell okay how much is the flow rate. If we have 10 psi against the pump, we have one flow rate. If we have less pressure against the pump, we can have okay less pressure against the pump, we can have high flow rate. Okay, that's how we read it. H here, uh, total differential head in feet, discharge minus suction. So the pump that I have, so suction pressure, H, S is suction, and this is discharge side, outlet side, it's a discharge, that's a head pressure. Okay? So if head pressure go up, then we deliver less flow rate. Like in the pump. We want two things, right? <coughs> high flow rate or high pressure. We want either we want either high flow rate or high pressure. We cannot have both at the time. We can have either high flow rate or high pressure. Okay. Uh, Q is the flow rate in gallon per minute. Okay. The next one is NPSHR. Net positive such an head required. That is curvy, go from the bottom. Okay. And we have BHP, brake horse power curve, curve C. So at a certain flow rate, we can tell brake horse power. And we have dot 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 dot. That dot dot dot. Those dot thing is uh, percent. I think that's uh, efficiency. Okay. Let's talk about brake horse power first. Big horsepower is the uh, actual horsepower that required by the engine, right? So for the actual power, there's a consideration of efficiency. Okay, that's why we have the efficiency part over there. If efficiency is one hundred percent, so big horsepower will be head multiplied by capacity multiplied by density specific gravity divided by foot power per minute. So if Efficiency go down instead of 1.0, we have 0.5. Then we have to put double power to the engine to deliver the same thing. Okay. BHP uh, can be read from the curve. Can be read from the curve at any Q. However, it is usually calculated from the efficiency head and flow. Okay. BHP brings brake horse power. EFF efficiency of the pump. Q is flow rate. Look at this equation carefully. Okay, because there is a unit conversion and you should be able to come up with that, can you? That's a pressure, right? Pressure in the unit of head of water of feet. Capacity, flow rate, or that's Q. In here we use GPM, what is GPM? Someone, uh, no one. Gallon per minute, okay? 8.33. Power per gallon. What is n point three three? Density of water. Okay. One gallon of water is eight point three three pound. Okay. And we have specific gravity of the fluid. Then we have so this is rho, right? And this is power foot power per minute. That's a conversion factor. So this is convert uh, foot. G gallon per minute, this is gallon per minute multiplied by power per gallon. So we have what? Power per uh, no, power per minute. So foot power per minute. And that's the conversion factor to change from this to horsepower. Okay? And if you do it, 32,000 divided by 8.33, you get that much. Maybe instead of 3960, we may get 3961, but it doesn't matter much. Okay, this equation, if you know the head required, the head is the difference between suction and uh, discharge and suction, right? Capacity, how fast we want to flow, and the specific gravity, then we can calculate what to buy. Okay. So I think I have a name sheet. Well, who wants to answer the following question? The next question. Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. No extra credit on your name, just raise your hand. No one? Let me call a name. Uh, Void? 
J. Hans Berger. Oh, John, right? John. Yeah. John. You see, horsepower over there uh, is just about head or uh, differential pressure and flow rate. What about viscosity consideration? What will viscosity have to do with this equation? If it's more viscous, do we need a bigger pump? Yes. Yes. Where's a uh, uh, viscosity term? Uh, On this equation. Which term has to do with viscosity? Oh, there's no viscosity term. You don't see mu. I don't know the answer to your question. Viscosity will have something to do with brake horsepower calculation. You agree? Yes. Right? But in the formula, it doesn't have viscosity. Or oh, viscosity go up, it changed what term on the right hand side? Will it change flow rate if viscosity oh, go up? H. No, H. I think it has to do with this efficiency thing. This comes from this kind of chart, right? Efficiency versus viscosity. Make sense? So viscosity plays some role and it's impact the efficiency term. Okay? So we may specify 20 gallon per minute. Okay? At the feet of 100 feet. And that's efficiency term has to do with viscosity. Thank you, John. Alright, now we can calculate brake horse power of the pump. Okay? And what about these two? Head and capacity. <coughs> or how fast do we need to have it spin? That's come from the pump curve, right? Okay, we'll read the pump curve later. Brake okay. power example, we know efficiency is 70%, capacity is that much, and then we just we know the brake horse power, put the value in, then we can calculate the head, or vice versa. Okay. It's just put the number in and do the calculation. The exam will be closed book, so if it appears, this equation will be given. I don't ask you to memorize it. But when it appears, okay, when it appears, it's just that. I don't tell you the unit of this, the unit of that, that, that. Yeah. Should I tell you? Should I? Maybe it's too long. I will think about it, but I don't think I am going to tell you the unit. I will mean, just put this on the instruction page and you, it's your job to know the unit, okay? <coughs> Method 2. Use some kind of chart, okay? There's a line. We start with line 1. Look at this one. Imperial gallon per minute, okay? This line is gallon per minute line. And we have another line. Uh, Change of pressure in PSI. So this is a head, right? Or change of head in feet. This chart minus suction. Step one, connect edge with GPM. Head with gallon per minute. So here we have head of 60 feet. Gallon per minute of 200. 60 feet is where 60 feet. One is on the top, two, three, and it's 50, so that has to be 60. Okay, that is a point of 60. Flow rate, 200, so that's 200. I connect them, I get the red line, and the cross point is over there. Okay, I get the cross point, that's step one. To get brake horsepower, step two, connect uh, net horsepower. Oh, no, net horsepower is what we want to get. Efficiency, percentage of efficiency. So, and extrapolate through the cost part. I think efficiency will be 0 0.8, almost 100%. So, I start from this part, move and go to the cost part, and extrapolate until it cross with net horsepower, and I read the value, and the value that I get is 4 or something horsepower. Very good, right? You can use the equation or the chart. You can use both, provided that you have it on the sheet, then you know how to do it.
Very, very easy, too easy. Okay, palm curve. Uh, efficiency is curve B. This red thing is efficiency thing. NPSHR, net positive suction head required at any flow rate, plot at constant RPM. BEP, best efficiency point, that's BEP. Okay. Best efficiency point. So that is the top of the curve. Um, before we go to net positive, such a head required, let's read the pump curve, that part. Pump curve depends on RPM, how fast we spin, right? So let's take a look at this example. Imperial diameter of 15 and 15, 16 um, inch. What are the head efficiency and PSHR? and break house power at 900 gallon per minute okay. 900 gallon per minute so first step I need to know that the curve is a plot between head and flow rate US gallon per minute okay. I want 900 gallon per minute so 900 is over there that's 900 gallon per minute now impeller diameter 15 and 15 over 16 inches so that's the line so this line it changed with the size okay that's the line that I have if the impeller diameter is smaller you see that smaller number 14 something and that's 12 something so the pump curve change right so I select that line then I move from uh, this point up then if I use that total head will be uh, it say 110 how do I get 110 so if I use that much diameter and I want that flow rate what is the head that it deliver so I go up to that point move to the left and that point is 110 feet okay what about PSI how do I convert Feed to PSI. Which page of the slide? You remember how do I convert from PSI to head? This. Okay. PSI multiplied by one forty four divided by something something something. Okay. Feed of the feed. I I think you should know it, or you should be able to come up with this equation by yourself. Should you not? Is this a pressure? Is this the unit conversion? Provided that I tell you water density, okay? And I tell you that one, uh, 12 inch is one foot. If I tell you 12 inch is one foot and I tell you water density, then you by yourself should be able to tell me this equation. Should you not? Yes, you should, right? So SD, let's say it's one. So now we can convert from field of liquid, field of water to PSI easily. Okay. This is left for maybe quiz or exam or something, maybe homework. Oh, but homework doesn't test you anything, you just open the slide and copy it. You know, cannot do anything. Uh, okay. What about <coughs> efficiency? I have 76. Efficiency line is a where's the efficiency line? Okay, 76. Uh, I have a bigger sharp. Okay. Oh, this is a bigger one. See this line? Percentage. 50 percent. 60 percent. 70 percent. 75. 80. 80 efficiency line is like that. That's 80. So that thing is efficiency okay 